Well, hey there, church. How are you guys doing? Awesome. We're excited to worship with you this morning. Why don't you stand with us? God, we just give you this time. We give you this service. And even though it's online and, and uh, we're not meeting like we normally do, God, we just want to praise you. We want to glorify you as a body. We know that your spirit is not confined to space. And so we just welcome you here, God, and be glorified. Amen. Let's worship together.
there's always hope In every high, in every low You're standing next to me In the fire, there's always hope I will lift my eyes and my heart cry Your grace keeps changing me, and 
high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ my living Who could imagine so great a mercy What heart could fathom such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And bear my shame When the cross has spoken I am forgiven The King of kings called
you in spirit and in truth oh God you are the one that rescues us you're the one that walks with us we thank you so much that we're not alone that we're not journey journeying alone that you're with us and that you camp with us that you want to reveal yourself to us in a personal way father I thank you for each person that is watching online that you would bless them this morning this evening this afternoon that you would minister to them in a powerful in a fresh way, God. We thank you that you are able to invade every home, that you're able to invade every family, that your desire is to come and touch and move us, Lord. So we say yes to you, we give you glory. We thank you that there's nothing too difficult for you, that you're the God that reigns upon the throne, that your name is greater, that your name is higher. So we surrender to you, God. We, we turn to you and we say to you that you are awesome. May you be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for this time of worship. It's so awesome to be able to worship the Lord together, right? All right. Thank you. It's a little different to do this with an empty house. But uh, at the same time, you know, it's really exciting to know that you're there. We can't see you but we know that you're there, so that is amazing. So good to be able to worship the Lord together even though we're not all here at the same time. It's awesome to be able to do that. And uh, uh, what we want to see is we want to see God be lifted high. And uh, I won't be bringing the word uh, this, uh, this morning or this evening, I'm kind of confused, right? Uh, Brent and Will, but I just want to share a few things with you guys uh, this, um, well, today. And uh, I think what we're doing here is very important. Uh, what we're doing here uh, as we stream this service, I think that's huge. And um, we, we invite you to make the effort. We really do. Invite you to make the effort to connect and to do this and uh, to participate in the services, to worship like in church. I know that you're probably comfortable right now, maybe on your bed, right? And maybe in the living room. Uh, but I invite you to open up your heart, and as uh, Brenton will be speaking this evening, just to open up and say, God, speak to me. Uh, not just to be a spectator or just to watch, but to take a hold of God's word and to be challenged by God's word. And even when it comes to worship, uh, we invite you to participate in worship and, and, to, um, and to gather together uh, with a few healthy friends hopefully, right? And as a family, just to, uh, to, uh, to uh, connect with God. And I think we can really use this to worship God as a family. And maybe you don't do that as a family. Maybe prayer is not part of your family life. But this could, could be a new start for you guys to worship the Lord together. So we invite you to do that. And uh, yeah, to do the, the most of it, to maximize this time. So yeah, blessings on you for that. Also, just want to thank you for your prayers. Um, we came back from out east uh, on Friday. That, that is yesterday. And uh, uh, we came back to, from my dad's funeral. My dad passed away on Monday. And uh, we thank you for your prayer, prayers for this. Uh, it was a hard go just to see my dad go. But he left... Uh, um, worshiping the Lord. What we did as a family, we were in his room and we worshiped the Lord together and uh, for about, I would say, two hours and he could not really move his, his, his lips when you could see his tongue just worshiping the Lord and uh, it was just so awesome to hold his hand and to move to, uh, to eternity and uh, thank you for your prayers and uh, yeah, blessings on you for that. Also, um, as you probably know, the province of Manitoba declared a state of emergency. 
uh, because of the virus, and uh, we were required uh, to suspend our church services for the next 30 days, and uh, so we'll continue to do this uh, online. And, and I, I believe it's important for us to remember that we're called to submit to authorities. And it's not a moral issue here, it's a safety issue. If it would be a moral issue, then we would have to question what we should do, but it's not a moral issue. Um, it's a safety issue, and I think it's a, the wise thing to do. So, so we're not doing this because we're afraid or we're caught by fear, but out of responsibility. I believe it's a responsibility to do this, and it's because we're called to care for our neighbor. And uh, so why we're doing this, it's not a, a reaction, but it's more a calling to, to, uh, to make sure that the church has, uh, is doing what it's supposed to do. That is first to glorify God, and we can do this, we still can do that, but also to love our neighbor. And um, I have a, a pastor friend in France that I was actually uh, talking to uh, just earlier this week, and um, he's very sick, him and his family. It's the real deal. His uh, daughter is uh, in quarantine, and, uh, it's, and he's out of the danger zone. But uh, it, it's, it's a real need. It's a, it's a reality. And, uh, and uh, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that the, the church stays safe. I like what it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says that the church came together, and uh, they came into the, into the temple's court to worship and to connect with God. But they also met in homes. And right now we can't come in the, in the temple's court. But we still can connect in our homes. We still, connect, we still can connect with people that are close to us. So, so this is not our new normal, by the way. Okay? Can you, can you tell someone in your household, phew, it's not our new normal. This too will pass. Okay? And it's a season that we're going through. And uh, we're not called to walk in fear. Right? Would you agree? We're not called to walk in fear but we're called to shine. We're really called to shine. And God is our shelter. God is our protection. And uh, we are uh, carriers of good news, right? So may you be a good, new, good news carrier, not a bad news carrier, right? There's enough bad news out there. May you bring the good news of the gospel. So that's our call, all right? So we're called to be the church. The church is called to be the church. And we're called to be Christ's ambassadors. So like I said just earlier, it's our time to shine. May you shine. May you uh, open. May you walk in the doors that are open. May you share your faith. May you ask the filling and the leading of the Holy Spirit to shine hope in the world that is around us. So we're not called to isolate ourselves. But for sure, we are, we're, we're called to be smart. And uh, we're called to have social distance. But we're not called to isolate ourselves, And if you know someone that is isolated, it's our responsibility to reach to them and to love on people. We don't want nobody to be alone. If you are alone, for example, and you're part of this church and you don't have a community, you don't have a small group, let us know. We want to minister to you. We want to walk with you. We don't want you to be alone in the next month or so. We want to be with you. I think that is so important. This is why we exist, right? We exist more than just having services. Church is not a service. Church involves services. But church is, is us working together, fulfilling the Great Commission, loving on each other. So we want to do that. So we still need community. We still need each other. So no one should live in isolation. Uh, please reach out. So we still can connect in small groups. It's not a shutdown yet, right? Hopefully it's not going to happen. So we still can connect in small groups. And we, and we invite you to do that. If you're sick or feeling sick, or if you've been traveling in another country, please stay home. Okay, make sure that you're wise when it comes to others. You don't want to, you want to be a blessing. You, you, you don't want to be a cause of sickness. So be wise, monitor yourself. I think that's very important. Um, from our end, we'll try to do everything we can to offer all the services online. And I uh, thank the staff right now for working over, <laughs> over time. Even though there's not, nobody here, the staff is working uh, extra work to make this possible. So um, we want you to take a hold of all the offers that we will present to you in the weeks to come when it comes to our, our online presence. Uh, for example, when it comes to the marriage conference or the marriage course, it's still going on. Our prayer summit will be online. Uh, or we'll have some kids worship and youth ministry and so on. We'll try our best to, uh, to bring this online. So 
uh, we invite you to, to follow us and to keep uh, uh, to, 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 uh, to follow us as we go forward because we'll be putting a lot of announcements out there just to keep track because we've never been here before, right? So we're trying to navigate through this. Also, we encourage you to continue to support us financially, support your church financially. Uh, as, we are, uh, ha- as we have an empty house, house, we still have things to do and we still have staff and, and uh, we still need finances to function. So I invite you to invest in God's home, in, 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 God's, in God's house, in your home. And Brent, Brenton will talk about that real shortly uh, about that. So we're working hard from our end to make sure that you stay connected. I'd like to finish off with this verse before I, I give the platform to Brenton. It's 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, a verse that you are familiar with that I like to use because I think it's pivotal when it comes to God moving upon our land. I believe that God wants to move. I believe that God wants to use this season to glorify himself and to show himself in the life of, of our nation and, and this world. And it says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people were called by my name, Humble themselves. So we're called to humble ourselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. I like the forgiveness of sin and I like, I like the healing of our land. And I believe God is calling us to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek his face, to turn from our wicked ways. And, and I believe that he will hear from heaven, he will forgive our sins, and he will heal our land. And that's what we need, right? So me, may we go before the Lord. It's not the time to complain and criticize, but it's time to pray. It's time to stand in the gap. I like what it says in the book, or in the book of Ezekiel. God is, uh, is scanning the land. Who will stand in the gap? And he looked at Prince, prince uh, the Levites, uh, the priests, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the rich people, the poor people, and he could, know, could find no one to stand in the gap. And hopefully that you and I will stand in the gap and intercede for God to move upon our land. So just want to encourage you to, to support us, to continue to pray for us, and we, may, we con, may we continue to do church the way that we can right now. So we need your participation. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So invite uh, Brenton to come forward and to share what God has placed on his heart. Blessings on you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good, insert whatever time you're watching this morning or evening or afternoon. Um, this, is, this is weird, um, speaking to just a, a bit of the worship team spread out throughout the auditorium, but I know there's a lot more of you, and so uh, just before I get into stuff, just a few uh, announcements. Again, there's no offering. Uh, today, but you can go to gmchurch.ca, click the give tab, and you can give online, or you can learn uh, other ways to give electronically, or you could also just go uh, come to GMC and drop that off uh, Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. You can come by uh, and bring a donation there. Uh, like Pastor Claude said, we do actually have something for the kids this morning as well. Again, if you go to our website and click the kids tab, then you'll be able to uh, have a worship service. Uh, there's an activity for you guys to do as well. We want to keep providing content for the kids as we don't have any uh, in-house grow ministry. And then also the marriage series is still going on. So go to gmchurch.ca uh, and then again, click the signups tab and then you can sign up for that. If you're already signed up for the marriage series, you are signed up. And so you don't need to sign up again. We have you, and we're going to be inboxing you uh, content there. Uh, continue to stay informed with what's going on, uh, and we really encourage you to uh, sign up for our newsletter. Again, on our website, if you scroll to the, the bottom of the page, uh, then you could uh, sign up for our newsletter right there. Perfect. So stay in touch during this time. Right on. Well, can we, can we pray? Yeah, God, I, I just thank you so much for, for everyone that, that's watching. And God, while we, it, it is better to meet together all at once, God, we want to make the best of this moment. And, and Holy Spirit, I, I know that you are, uh, you are not limited to just moving within this building. You can touch hearts in, their, in homes as people are watching in their pajamas. You can touch their hearts, Lord God. You are a big, powerful, mighty God. And so, God, I pray that, that your, your power and, and your speaking would go beyond my words this evening or morning. Amen. 
Great. So uh, what, I, what I wanted to talk on uh, today was uh, how Paul lived in quarantine. I'm going to put that in brackets because Paul's quarantine was actually really prison. And so some of you might feel a little cooped up with your kids right now, like, ah, oh, can I handle three weeks with kids at home? Um, I, I think we can find solace in the fact that Paul's quarantine was a lot more permanent a lot more severe and long-lasting and a lot less comfortable. He didn't have a couch to sit on. Uh, he couldn't even stream Netflix, believe it or not. I don't even know if he had the internet where he was. Um, and, and again, I don't want to make light of whatever you're going through um, because I know a lot of you have been laid off. A lot of you have lost your jobs. And so I don't want to make light of any trial that you're facing right now. But I do really think this, again, this evening or morning, we can find a lot of comfort in the fact that, that, that Paul, in, in the space of imprisonment, actually was able to live his life in, in an amazing way with purpose. And so we're going to talk about five things that we can learn from Paul from his time of quarantine. Um, and we're going to start uh, this off looking at 2 Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy is, is maybe one of my favorite books in the whole Bible uh, because Paul was writing this during his second imprisonment uh, in Rome. And actually it was during this imprisonment that Paul kind of knew that this was his last days. The last days were, were coming. And so he's, he's, writing to, he's writing to Timothy and kind of it's, it's, it's kind of his swang song letter. He's kind of saying, Timothy, like, I fought the good fight. This is it. And I was actually able to um, go to Rome. Um, I, I was able to go to Rome for, for a time and actually go to the place where Paul wrote this letter. And I, and I read, I was able to read 2 Timothy and, and I started crying a little bit and I was like, I guess this is just allergies, right? Um, but it was just this powerful time of being able to, to, to go to the place where Paul wrote this letter. So let, let's start right at the beginning. Um, 2 Timothy 1, verse 1 to 7, we're going to cover. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience. As night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. The first thing that Paul realized in quarantine was that he had a lot of time to pray. Night and day, he was able to remember Timothy in his prayers. Uh, in Ephesians 1.16, it reads, I've not, stopping, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, the church in Ephesus, remembering you in my prayers. And so Paul realized, I'm in, I'm in jail. I don't have a lot to do right now, but I can pray. And I can take this time to pray. And I don't know what situation you're in right now. Again, we're not all in quarantine right now. Um, a lot of us do have freedom to, to still, again, gather in small gatherings. And, but some of you are maybe in this place where, you, where you're cooped up a little bit more. Um, but what if we took this as an opportunity to learn how to pray? Like, let's be honest, there's nothing else to do, right? Sports are canceled. I don't know if you've seen that joke, um, day three without sports. I saw a woman on my couch. Apparently, she's my wife. She looks nice. <laughs> Um, but there's nothing really happening right now. And, and we can really take this time and, and, and we can binge all of Netflix and we can just devour social media or we can become people of prayer. What if you look back and you, you're able to tell your, your, your grandkids one day if you're young and you said, I remember COVID-19. It was, it was this interesting time, but it taught me how to pray. It actually brought me to my knees like never before. Our world was in a state of crisis and there was so much going on in the world. There were so many needs around me, but it brought me to my knees and it taught me how to pray. And I presented myself before God and said, God, how do you want to use me in this season? And it shaped me like never before. And I think we need this attitude in our hearts right now, because right now our world is in a state of crisis, but, but, but by the way, our world is always in a state of crisis. It's always in the need of prayer. It's always in the need of people to come to God, right? And so what if in the season, while we may have a bit more time, don't waste it. Become a person of prayer. I really think God can do this in us during this season. So let's continue in verse 4. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I might be filled with joy. And GMC, I just, I just want to say we long to see you. 
that we might be filled with joy. Um, this, is, this is a weird way to do church, honestly. It's just, it feels slightly awkward because it's just better to get together, right? It's, it's, it's better to meet together. And so we long to see you. And, and I really think that, that, you know, it's okay if we miss each other. And this is gonna de- develop in us maybe, maybe a new appreciation for the gathering together that we have, right? And, and so I, I long to see you so that I might be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Louis, uh, and your mother, Eunice. Uh, I'm persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you, fan into flame the gift of God, which uh, is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. I believe Paul, during his time of quarantine, Um, He knew that temporary distance didn't mean total disconnection from his people. And and if you look at 2 Timothy, this this letter would have changed Timothy's life. I know it, because it's the inspired word of God, and it's changed my life. Again, I've I've, I've, uh, read this letter so many times. It's addressed to a young pastor pastoring, and that young pastor actually was probably around in his 30s, and so I'm 29, and so that hopefully still makes me young as well moving into the 30s soon. Um, but, but Paul, this is how he did most of his ministry. He did most of his ministry long distance. You know, he had churches everywhere and he was constantly, when he wasn't in prison, traveling all around. But he was also constantly sending others to um, minister to his churches. He was sending letters. And, and we, we like to call um, envelopes snail mail, right? It's like, oh, I'm gonna send a letter in the mail, snail mail. It's gonna take like, three days to to get there. Oh, it's so slow. Um, Yeah, Paul didn't um, just write a letter, lick a stamp, be like, okay, they should get that in three years. No, they were going hundreds of miles. He was like, okay, you take this, and you sail, run, and then you sail, and then you go, and a few years later, they'll get the, well, maybe not years, but you know what I mean? This was crazy, and I wonder if at any time those, those messengers were like, Paul, I know you want like 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and the, some believe there was one before that, but it was like, Paul, you gotta stop. Like, like, just write it all in one letter. I can't keep going back and forth. Um, imagine if Paul had an iPhone. You know, if Paul had an iPhone, he would just be able to FaceTime Timothy. Yo, Timothy, how's it going? Paul didn't have an iPhone. He was in prison, and all he had was, was writing letters and getting people to send it, but yet he stayed connected to his people, and yet he encourages people. So how much more can we do that in this time? Honestly, we have iPhones, we have technology, and, and sometimes we don't use that to stay connected. And I know, I know it's not as good as face-to-face, but really we, st- we still can have awesome times of, of, of really connecting with each other. Do you know what you can do on an iPhone? You can call someone. You can call someone in real time. You can hear their voice, and then you can talk back to them. It's wild. I actually forgot that until I got married. Uh, and then my wife just ke- kept calling me. And I was like, why is, why is my wife calling me? Oh, yeah, that, she's my wife. That's, that's, that's a good thing. Um, but now I like doing that. At lunchtime, um, I often call my wife, and I'm able to hear her voice. And it's just, it's, it's not as good as seeing each other, but, but it is this connection, right? And it's awesome. Even this week on, on, on Wednesday, um, I, it, was, it, was a, it was a wild week for me. It was, it was a stressful week for me. And there was one evening where, my mind was just like, woo, racing with everything going on, and I was chatting with someone online, and my friend just, just started typing a prayer for me. And man, I was encouraged, I was uplifted. The next day I had somebody over, and, and we talked, and we chatted, and we prayed together, and it was amazing. So whatever context you're in right now, whether you still are able to, to meet in, in small gatherings or whether, whether you are, if you've traveled or you're, or you're sick and, and facing a, a time where you are, you know, in, in self-isolation, so, uh, social distancing does not mean social isolation. It doesn't mean emotional isolation or distancing and it doesn't mean spiritual distancing. We can really use this time to connect together. And again, whatever means that we have, I really believe that if we are intentional, that then God can do a good work and God can keep us connected. And so I encourage you, in this season, ask God this question. How can I connect with others and disciple them? 
Honestly, if Paul could do it while he was in prison and he had snail mail and to a whole new level, then we can easily stay connected with others in this time. Will it take some intentionality? Yeah, but it always takes intentionality, right? Even when we were meeting together, sometimes we were socially disconnected. We came in here, we leave, and that's really it. No, let's, let's use this time to remain socially connected. I love this quote by Gilbert Kanji. It says, Every hand we don't shake may become a phone call we place. Every hug we avoid may become a verbal expression of warmth and concern. Every distance, however small we place between ourselves and another, may become a thought as to how we can be of help to that other should the need arise. Come on. There there are some in-house events that that are canceled, um, and and some are going to be moved online, but, but relationships, friendships, and discipleship is not canceled relationships, friendships, and discipleship is not canceled. What if God could do a great work in our families? You know, I've been hearing that like lots. It's like, oh, it's just me and my family. Well, what if God revives your family? What if it was this, this time, what if you're in this time of, 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 you know, meeting in your family and God just brings you together like never before? What, what if God revives your marriage? What if your marriage is is distant and disconnected and and I encourage you, sign up for the the, the marriage series and what if God uses this moment to revive your marriage and revive your family? I really think if we really press into the means that we have, then God can do a good work. Amen, church? Comment, amen, right? (laughs) So let's uh, let's move on to Paul's letter to to Philippi. Uh, This was a letter during his first Um, his first imprisonment, it was an in-house imprisonment, and we're going to start in Philippians 2, and we're going to be reading um, verses 12 all the way through 26. It says, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it's become clear throughout the whole palace guard and everyone else that I'm in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of my brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Paul knew that no quarantine could rob his purpose to reach others and to preach the gospel. Paul knew that. And he actually looked at at, at this time of imprisonment and he was like, wow, this is awesome. God can really move the gospel forward. God can really do a great work. I have so much time to encourage my friends. I have so much time to write these letters and to send them all over the world. Wow, the gospel is moving forward. And church, again, I really think this can be a season that we learn to be the church. You know, outside the four walls of the church, because right now we're, we're not even meeting in, in, inside the church right now. But we can learn in the season to be the church in a whole new way. We can learn that whatever situation we're in, God wants to use it. God, like, like Claude was saying last week, God wants to turn this crisis into an opportunity. And he wants to use it. But church, we've got to step up. We've got to be the church. And, and for some of you, maybe some of the volunteers are like, oh, It's good to catch our breath. We have volunteers. They they work so hard. They honestly put in so many hours. It's so amazing to see. And so some of the volunteers are like, whew, it's a good break. But I really want to encourage you. There's more work than ever before to be done. Honestly, there's more work than ever before to be done. And if you want to get involved, by the way, too, uh, email the church, info at at gmchurch.ca. Central Station is still looking for people to deliver groceries because this is a moment we need to step up and be the church because this is what church is all about. This is what church is all about. In James 1.27, it says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, amazing worship. Really nice lights. No, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This is what God wants us to be. He wants us to be a people that would be holy. He wants us to be a people that would be set apart, a people that would follow in his ways, a people that would repent of our sin and live for him. And he wants us to be a people that would look after those who are in distress, 
who, who would look after those who need our help. And in 1 Timothy 5, I believe, Paul writes, and, and, and he's writing to Timothy, and he's saying, hey, hey Timothy, we, we need to make sure that, that we're taking care of the widows. And if you read the passage, it's kind of funny. It's like, well, some widows are just busybodies. Don't worry about them. But, but others, other widows, you have to make sure that their families are taking care of them. Don't just send them right to the church. Make sure that their families are taking care of them, and they're covered. And then we're going to get the ones that slip through the cracks, but we're going to make sure sure that no one is left without care. And this is what we need to do in this time. Church, we need to look up. There's more work to do than never before. Honestly, it's time to get busy. It's time, your church life, is, it's time to get busy. Okay, church life is probably going to be busier in the season than ever before if we step up and if we see this as a time of, wow, it's time to shine. What if we see it as a time where the gospel can move forward more than ever before? And actually, um, in in uh, 249 to 262 AD, there was a plague um, in Rome called the Plague of Cyprian. And it was a plague that, that was kind of uh, stayed within that, that region there and, and branched out only a little bit. It wasn't worldwide like this one. But the death rate of that plague was, was 30 to 60 percent. And one of the reasons the death rate was so high because, was because the pagans, when someone would, would get symptoms of this, they would throw them onto the street and let them die. That's, that's what they would do. They'd be like, this guy's sick, and so isolation was just, you're out of here, bud. Um, and, and obviously the death rate for those people was extremely high because you have no one to care for you. But the Christians stepped up. The Christians cared for these people. The Christians nursed these people. And most um, scholars and, uh, would, would say that, that the survival rate was about 90% of the people that, that the Christians took in during that time. And, and this resulted in one of the biggest periods of growth for the early church. It was one of the biggest catalysts for the early church. And even later, you know, Emperor Julian was like, hey, can we make these pagan religions like this Christian religion? He tried to do that, didn't work at all because it wasn't, that's not the focus of pagan religions, but man, what if we step up in this moment? What if we step up this moment and, and care um, um, for those who are in need? What if we call those who are in isolation and, and, and those that have no one be carriers of hope and be carriers of love in a safe way, in a social distancing way, but, but being socially distant, but loving like never before. Loving like never before. Amen, church? Awesome. It's a quiet crowd today. <laughs> it's only a few here. So again, if you want to get involved, uh, contact the church, and I think there's going to be so, there are so many opportunities. Even more than that, just open your eyes. The opportunities are out there, and they're going to become more every day. Let's continue in verse 15. It says, it's true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in change. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether false motives or true, Christ is preached. And for this, I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice. Um, in this short letter of Philippians, Paul writes rejoice 16 times. He's in prison. There's these people out there that are slandering his message and his name, dragging his name through the mud. He doesn't even know if he's going to get out of here alive. And, and we have the famous in chapter 4 as well, rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Someone needed to tell Paul, Paul, your, your life kind of sucks. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Are kids watching? I don't know. Okay. Paul, your life was not so good. Paul, you're in jail. Paul, you don't know if you're going to get out. Paul, these people are slandering your name. Paul, why are you rejoicing? But Paul knew in, in quarantine that he had a reason to rejoice. He had a reason to rejoice. And, and I, I, I want to tell you, whatever you're going through right now, it might be really hard. You have a reason to rejoice. And we have to really choose to make that decision to rejoice. It, it, it's this intentional thing. Why do we rejoice? It's because he's worthy. He's worthy. Whatever situation we're going through, we have a God who's worthy of our praise. And we have to choose to rejoice. I, I remember when I was working uh, in Morden, and, and I, I'd been told uh, a few days before this that someone was saying, you know, like when, when something bad happens, you have to 
you have to say something that's, you know, you have to drop something like, you just need to, you need to let it out. You need to say a bad word like, ah, oh, uh, you know what I mean? Um, and so I, I was doing the garbage and I guess this was in my mind and, and um, it was in the summertime. And so what happened in the summertime is the, gar- the garbage bins kind of heated up. And there was, there was kind of like this, on the bottom sometimes there was this liquid and it kind of like turned into a, a nice garbage stew. And, um, and so I was taking out this garbage and, and all of a sudden I, I tried to, to dump the garbage and I, I dumped it all over myself. Um, and uh, by the way, this story is going to make me sound so holy. Um, I don't respond in this way every, every way. But, but it was in that moment where, where I'm covered in garbage stew that I have a choice. You know, there's no one listening. You know, you know the, the term, like, if, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? If I say a bad word right now, is it okay? No one's going to hear it, but God would hear it, right? And I just chose in that moment, again, I don't respond this way every time, but I want to. Um, but I just chose in that moment, I just raised my hands and I say, God, you're good. God, you're awesome. You're worthy. You're amazing. And, and, and I just want to, I just want to say Church, I don't know what you're going through right now, but there could be a lot of things being dumped on you. There, there could be a lot of things, and, and maybe life is really hard right now. Maybe you're just going through a, a really hard time, but I, I just want to tell you that, that God is worthy of your praise, that God is, is worthy, and, and we can make this choice to even though we're in a trial, even though we're, 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 we're in this place, we can choose to rejoice. And, and the beautiful thing is that when we rejoice, when we really press in and rejoice, we see God on his throne. And we see God and we're like, wow, God, you're on your throne. You're in control. You're looking after me. You're going to care for me. And it's just beautiful as we lift him up for no other reason than he's worthy. We get this picture that God's on the throne. And all of a sudden, not that anything changed in our situation or circumstance, but we're able to move forward knowing that he's in control. Paul realized that no quarantine can quarantine his praise. No quarantine can take away his reason to rejoice. Amen? Awesome. I I got one more point for you. Um, Just bear with me this morning. Um, I guess it's a lot easier to leave church, right? Because you could just mute me or turn me off. But one more, it's a good one, so please don't do that. Um, Verse, uh, let's pick it up in verse 19. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that no, in no way I will be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I'm to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what should I choose? I don't know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is way better. But it's necessary for me, uh, for you, that I remain in the body. And convinced of this, I know that I'll remain. And I'll continue with all of you for your progress and join the faith. So that through being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. The last thing that Paul knew in quarantine is he knew that that, that um, the earth wasn't his home. Earth wasn't his home. And Paul is, it's a, this is a wild verse, eh? Paul's really saying like, I want to die. It would be so great to die because I get to be with Jesus. But uh, I, I, know that I, I, I'm not, I know that God's not done with me. I know that he is a work for me. I know that he's a purpose for me. And so for that reason, for the reason of blessing all of you and encouraging all of you, I'm going to stay here. But the beautiful thing is church, when we realize whatever trial we're going through, when we realize that this isn't our home, that then, then, then all of a sudden our, our, our source of hope, our source of peace, our source of joy, our source of security isn't here either. And for Paul, his source of peace and hope and joy and security was only found in God. And so you can strip everything away from him. If you look at Paul's life, it was just this life of trials, but you stripped it all away and you took everything away from Paul and he still had everything because he had a living hope. 
He had a peace that transcended understanding. He had a security that was found in God alone. And this is what gave him strength. Amen? And, and I just want to conclude with, with one last uh, verse. Um, it's the verse, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Um, and, and if I had a dollar for every time I heard this verse out of context, I would be a very rich man. Uh, if I had a dollar for every time I've used this verse out of context, I would, have a, I would be pretty well off. Um, but I want to read it in its full context. Uh, and I think it is just such a, a powerful verse and such a timely verse for this season in our lives. And it says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but had no opportunity to show it. So the, what the Philippians did is they gave Paul an offering. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty, and I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do this through him who gives me strength. And church, I, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what kind of season it is for you, but I, but I know and I hope and I pray that we can learn the secret. We can learn the secret that, that we can be content in any and every circumstance, whether, whether we have lots or we have little, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And this is our secret. This is our hope. This is where it's all founded. It's found in God. And Paul just really realized that, that this, this earth wasn't his source of any kind of security or hope or peace. It was found in God alone. And because of that, it didn't matter what life threw his way. Any and every circumstance, I'm gonna be okay because Christ is in me, Christ is with me, Christ is for me, Christ's grace is running through my veins, and so I'm gonna be all right. I'm content to know that I have God. Yeah, can we pray? Hmm. Yeah, God, I just thank you so much that you wanna move in this time, whatever situation anyone's in, you want to move in a, in a powerful way. And God, God, right now, as we're in the state of whatever quarantine we're in, whether we can meet in small gatherings or not, God, we, we can become people of prayer. God, we can learn to pray and lift you up like never before. Um, God, 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 I pray that Whatever distance we have to have or social distancing things we need to take, God, I pray that it would be a time of great connection. God, I actually pray that new connections would arise, new connections in family, new connections in, in marriage. God, we would take advantage of this. And God, we would just see the needs around us. God, we can be the church like never before. God, I pray that you teach us how to love. Teach us how to care for our brothers and sisters. And God, if we see anyone in need of material possessions, like it says in 1 John, would the love of God spur us to give? Would the love of God spur us to reach out? Would the love of God spur us to, to, to find a way to love this world right now? Holy Spirit, open our eyes. There are so many opportunities. It's so easy to see the opportunities. God, I just believe we need to be faithful and we need to step up and be the church. So help us to do that. And God, we thank you that, that we have a reason to rejoice. You're worthy. You're good. You're awesome. You're amazing. And you're sitting on the throne. And God, our home isn't here. Our security isn't here, our peace isn't here, it's found in you alone. And that God, I pray that, that through this, whatever anyone's going through, whether they're going through a trial or not, or whatever situation it is, God, use this moment to help us to realize that we are citizens of your kingdom. We are citizens of heaven, Lord God. Yeah. Mm. And, and usually this is the point where we say with every eye closed, 
If you want to give your life to God or come back to God, would you raise your hand? I'm going to, I'm going to switch it up this morning. It's, it's going to be a little different. I'm going to say, it's going to be a little crazy, with every eye open, and you're going to say, well, they're going to see that I'm giving my life back to God. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Then, then they can pray for you, right? We can't have people in the prayer room today, but maybe you're surrounded with family and you want to make a decision. I want to turn back to God. I want to repent of my sin. I want to come to him. Maybe you're making a decision for the first time to come to God. I'm just going to say with, with every eye open, if you want to do that and give your life to God and just say, God, I want to turn back to you. God, I've been, I've been relying on just this world to get me by for my peace and security. And, and God, I, I, I want to put my life in your hands. If that's you, this evening or morning, would you raise your hand and say, I want to give my life back to God. And if you're in your homes and you see anyone's hand raise, um, now or just right after the service is a really good time to pray for them. But God, God, I pray that you would use this moment. You would use this season. You'd help us to learn to live in this, whatever quarantine we're going through, in a way that would advance your kingdom. Amen. Awesome, so as well, the, the prayer room uh, is closed, obviously. Uh, but we encourage you, uh, our, our phone lines are open. You know, you can call the church. Um, you can email the church. If you email info at gmchurch.ca, leave your prayer request, leave your number, and we'll call you. We want to reach out for you, to you. We want to help you in any way we can during the season. So honestly, don't be a stranger. Email us and say, hey, I need some prayer. Here's my number. And we want to call you. We want to reach out to you. We want to stay connected with you and help you in any way that we can during the season. Amen. So continue to reach out. Um, also, for those of you who are like, ah, church at home, it's, it's a lot easier. I can just stay in my PJs. You know, it's, ah, I don't have to greet anyone. I'm going to challenge you. I, I, I'm going to challenge you to take some action steps this morning. And so I have three action steps for you to take. One, uh, discuss together in your household what you learned today. Talk about what stood out to you, how you can apply this message to your lives. Two, Pray together as a family. And if you're watching this alone, that means you'll have to maybe call someone and just say, hey, can we pray together based on the message that we just heard? Three, today or this week, call someone that you know and encourage them. Speak into them. Remember, this time is not a time uh, of social isolation or emotional distancing or spiritual distancing. So this week, especially if you know of someone who has traveled recently or someone who is sick right now and is at home and isn't supposed to move anywhere, call these people. Let, let's be a community, a thriving community during this time, reaching out together. So um, we're going to worship, and, and those encouragements are actually going to be on the screen uh, right after worship. So I encourage you, instead of just turning off uh, the TV and saying that's all for church today, let's, let's take some action and let's pray together. Yeah, but let's worship. You take our lives, flawed yet beautiful. Restore, refine, Lord, you're merciful. Spirit of God, breathe on your church, pour out your presence, and speak through your word. We pray in every nation, Christ be known, our hope and salvation, Christ alone.
God, we pray to you, humble ourselves again. Lord, would you hear our cry? Lord, will you heal our land? That every eye will see, that every heart will know. The one who took our sin, the one who died and rose. song. And and GMC, I just want to encourage you. Church is not canceled. Community is not canceled. Discipleship is not canceled. The gospel is not quarantined. This is an amazing time, an amazing season that, that we can mobilize, that we can be the church, that we can get together in responsible matters and have this beautiful time of prayer and connection like never before. Prayer is not canceled. We're going to have a prayer summit online. This can be an amazing season for our church. And wow, we long to be together because that's better. I really believe if we're intentional, we can really remain connected and be a light and hope that our world world needs. Amen. Awesome. So that's not the end of church. Again, we're going to have a screen that's going to come with some action points. Um, But church, yeah, we we love you and we're going to be doing as much as we can online. So look out for that. Um, But have an amazing uh, day. See ya.